Hi there, Micah here on this channel, which has the purpose of supporting you in your personal self-leadership. The stage or mode of personal development that we mainly function on determines our logic of thinking and the way we behave. In other words, our self-leadership. I'm really fascinated by learning and discovering new perspectives. And this model of personal growth or ego development can give us some interesting insights into how we can broaden our horizons. A few weeks ago, I talked about the four signs of personal development, and I mentioned briefly that I had taken these signs from psychological theories about personal growth, or as they call it, ego development. And some of you express an interest in hearing about the stages themselves. So this is what I'll be addressing in this video. For those of you who may not have heard of stages of development before, this is something that thinkers and psychologists have been discussing throughout history. The idea that our growth as a child, as a teen, as an adult, follows a certain pattern that is common for everyone. And psychologists today are still working on these theories and working on finishing them up, trying to formulate the last stages and trying to become more clear also about the individual stages. Today I want to introduce the five most common stages that most of the people in the Western world act from. About 95% of the Western population acts from these stages. I say Western world because that's where the studies have taken place. And the names and descriptions of these stages come from who I find to be a great modern thinker, Svenja Hofot. She hasn't developed a theory on personal growth herself, but she has a very comprehensible way of describing the stages in her books. By the way, we might also call these stages modes instead of stages, because they are more flexible than the word stage might suggest. This means that when someone has reached a certain way of thinking and functioning in their life, and this corresponds to one of these modes or stages, that doesn't mean they will always be acting from that singular stage. They might also sometimes act from stages of earlier or later development, depending on the situation or their energy level. Also, what may happen is that someone may be understanding later stages of development intellectually, but not applying them in their actual life. So let's dive into it. Let's take a look at the stages. And one thing to watch out for is that what often happens is that something that was very neglected on an earlier stage of development becomes one of the main drivers of the next stage of development. So this is something that you might want to look out for when I go through the description of these stages. The ego or self-oriented mode. So we all go through this mode at some point in our life as a child, teen, young adult, and about 5% of people keep this mode as the main mode they act from. The motto of this mode is, I will take what I want. People on this mode are driven by their impulses and the desire to fulfill their needs. They can be reckless, manipulative. They're often unreflective and closed towards feedback. They can also be judgmental, guided by stereotypes, and they will only stick to agreements if they will personally benefit. Their main competency is to push until they get what they want, and speaking in a professional sense, to conquer the market. What inspires growth from this stage to the next stage of development is reaching the limits of one's behavior in this stage. Realizing that one will not be able to achieve a certain goal with the strategies of this stage. And the major thing to learn on this stage is that one is not alone on this world and that others have needs too. The group mode. 
About 12% of people act mainly from the group mode. On this mode, the main intention is to belong, to be part of a community and a group. And the core part of one's identity is defined by the groups that one is part of. What the group is actually doing may even be secondary. This may result in a person jumping from group to group that have opposite contents or intentions because the main thing is to be part of a group, to be part of something, some community. The main orientation for one's own choices in this mode is what others are doing or not doing. And when we're in this mode, we have a strong desire to conform to the expectations others have of us. People on this mode can be recognized as being well-adjusted and having few own opinions. Their main strength is to be able to go along with what a team or group is doing, and their main weakness is to think in in-groups and out-groups, to form cliques, and to have this mentality of we are better than you are, my group is better than your group. What inspires growth from this mode is realizing that there's actually no group on earth in which 100% of the members are exactly like me to become more aware of one's own individuality and uniqueness. And this doesn't mean when people grow from this stage onto later stages, it doesn't mean they stop being part of groups. It just changes the way they relate to groups and the way they guide their behavior, the mode of efficiency. So most of the people, most of the time act from this mode, about 38%. This is a mode in which we become aware of our individuality, of our competencies, of our uniqueness. And this is also what is very important to us on this mode. So when we're part of groups, we feel that this urge to express our uniqueness and to underline that although we're part of the team or group, we are still very different and unique from everyone there. A lot of thought on this stage is focused on discovering who am I? What kind of a person am I? What, what do I want? What makes me me? Because remember on the stage before this, the group mode, that's something that we don't ask ourselves primarily. We just conform to the expectancies of, of others. But then on the next stage, this is something that we really want to discover and find out what do I actually want besides putting aside everything that others expect of me. People on this mode can be very productive. That's why I chose the B symbol. And they often have a way of doing things that they consider to be the right way to do things. And they can sometimes be controlling of others if others are not doing the things in the way that they think is the right way to do it. Growth happens from this mode when we experience the limits of our productivity and efficiency, when we realize that Actually, there's more to life than being productive and getting a lot of things done. The question is also, how essential is what I'm doing? The mode of effectivity. About 30% of people mainly act in this mode. They have the understanding that there is many ways to get to Rome. And rather than just wanting to do things right, they want to do the right things. It's an increased awareness of the importance of intent and purpose and setting goals. People in this mode can be very idealistic and have high standards. They want to do something that has a purpose. And for them, success is to reach the goals that serve this purpose. Growth is inspired from this mode by not meeting one's own standards and ideals or feeling the pressure of having too much responsibility. The mode of flexibility. 
about 10% of people mainly act from the mode of flexibility. Their main desire is to learn and grow. They have developed something called the growth mindset. They have a very flexible and dynamic picture of themselves, and they're firmly convinced that anyone can learn and grow and change at any point in time. They constantly re evaluate and question their own attitudes, perspectives, and standards. They're able to grow from feedback and conflicts. They also have a constructivist approach to reality, which means that they are aware that what we see as real depends on how we process information and that it's something that we construct and that the same experience or the same situation can be experienced very differently or will be experienced very differently by different people. They question assumptions and are usually the ones that push development in teams and groups. They value the differences that people bring to the table and they reflect their own stereotypes and don't let the, them guide their behavior. They're very good at taking on different perspectives, understanding others, and their main difficulty is not being able to come to a decision because everything seems reasonable. Later modes. So psychologists haven't really come to a conclusion yet how many modes there are in total, but there are two more modes coming after the mode of flexibility that psychologists pretty much agree on. And this is firstly the mode of integration. This is a mode in which people become more able to integrate things that seem paradox on other modes. And they are very aware of what they are thinking about or what is in their mind at any given moment. They have the ability to understand how language creates reality and they learn to rely on non-rational sources of knowledge. After that comes the mode of fluidity. In this mode, people have completely given up the desire or feeling that there's a need to judge others at all. They playfully go back between serious and trivial topics and they have a this ability to just go with the flow of life. They can be great generators of global and social change. And instead of a focus on achieving things, people in the mode of fluidity are mainly focused on being. This is a really fascinating topic, isn't it? What do you find surprising or relevant about these modes? Also, be sure to watch my other video on ego development. I'll link it up here. I talk a lot about personal growth on this channel. And if you're new here and you don't want to miss anything, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to support this channel, leave a like and perhaps a comment. I really tremendously relish our discussions in the comment section. And maybe you know someone that would be interested in this video, then share it with them. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.